Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, very recently, the U.S. House of Representatives passed on a bipartisan basis, H.R. 3522, the Employee Health Care Protection Act by Congressman Bill Cassidy. Uh, this bipartisan act that passed the House would keep the President's core promise throughout the Obamacare debate when he told every American, if you like the health care coverage you have, you can keep it, period, end of story. Uh, and I'm bringing this up in the Senate because it is vital that the President and everyone who made that pledge keep that promise, and this bill enacted into law would do that. Again, the bill is limited, focused, and straightforward. It lets small businesses and workers keep their health care coverage if they like it. It provides more affordable health care options for American workers who don't want or can't afford the other Obamacare-mandated plans. Now, again, the President and every Democrat who voted for Obamacare promised that explicitly again and again and again. And when that didn't happen, when millions of Americans were kicked off the plan they had and they liked and they wanted to keep, Americans rightly felt misled. In fact, that led to the President's promise and commitment, if you like your plan, you can keep it, being labeled by nonpartisan sources in 2013 as the, quote, lie of the year, close quote. So this bill would fix that. It would make it good. It would not repeal Obamacare. It would fix that part of Obamacare. It would make that promise good. The Keep Your Plan bill would let insurers continue to sell those plans that people want to keep, that are less expensive, that cover basic but crucial needs. At least two million people would likely sign up for these. Now, last fall, nearly five million Americans all across the country had their health can plans canceled, even though they wanted to keep them, even though the president told them they could keep them. In Louisiana, that was 93,000 people who received those cancellation notices, having gotten that clear pledge and promise from the president and other supporters of Obamacare. Sadly, that hurt isn't over because the employer mandate for businesses that employ 100 or more workers, um, that is still coming. And when that mandate kicks in in just a few months, we're going to see the same thing happen all over again with millions upon millions of Americans in Louisiana and every single state getting pushed off the plan they had they wanted to keep small businesses losing that opportunity, losing the plan they had, they liked, they wanted to keep. Now, this bill passed the House, as I said, on a bipartisan basis, 247 to 167. Over two dozen Democrats voted to support it, this plan, this uh, bill by Congressman Bill Cassidy. Even Democrats on the House side see the importance of the legislation. And I ask all of us to recognize that this is a crucial element of Obamacare that needs to be fixed. It absolutely needs to be fixed. 39 Democrats in the House previously had voted for a similar bill, again, to let Americans keep their plan in the individual market. Senate Democrats scrambled with the administration last year to find some way to let individuals who face cancellations on the individual market keep their plan. But that, those cancellations are happening to a lot of folks, hasn't been fixed for all those folks by a long shot, and more of those sorts of cancellations are on the way when the employer mandate finally hits. So I urge all of us to come together to pass this bill in the Senate as it has been passed and on a bipartisan basis in the House. So with that, Madam President, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of H.R. 3522, which was received from the House. I further ask consent that the bill be read a third time and passed, the motion to reconsider be considered made, 
and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Madam President. The Senator from Connecticut. Reserving the right to object, just very briefly. Um, as the Senator knows, the President has set forth policies that allow for states like Louisiana, which has taken advantage of this opportunity through the work of the Senior Senator and Republican Insurance Commissioner to allow individuals to stay on their plans. Uh, this bill would allow for new plans to uh, be offered uh, that do not comply with the ACA, plans that would include the kind of discriminatory treatment that the ACA seeks to cure, such as higher costs for women than men, uh, treatment discriminatory against individuals with pre-existing conditions. Uh, for that reason, uh, Madam President, uh, I would object. Objection is heard. Madam President, reclaiming the, the Senator floor. Senator from Louisiana. I, I think this is very unfortunate. My distinguished colleague alluded to what I know. Let me tell you what I know. I know 93,000 Louisianians were forced off a plan they had they liked, they wanted to keep. I know the President of the United States promised them exactly the opposite. I know my Louisiana colleague in the Senate promised them exactly the opposite. And I know thousands of more cancellations are on the way when the employer mandate is enforced. That's what I know. I hold hundreds of town hall meetings in Louisiana. That's what I know from talking to Louisianians. And that's what I know as the central problem of Obamacare that needs to be fixed. It passed the House on a bipartisan basis. I find it very unfortunate that we can't bring it up in the Senate on the same basis and pass it expeditiously. That, Madam President, I yield the floor.